All right, so today we'll talk about how to begin an oil painting. Uh, like I just mentioned before I turn the video camera on, uh, this took about 45 minutes in class. Um, if it's your first time oil painting, it may take you a little bit longer. Uh, but I will show you how I went from this um, just a contour outline drawing of my photograph to something like this. Um, and before I start, I want to point out some of the differences between oil paint and acrylic paint. Um, and we'll start with the size of the tube. So this tube, if I um, were painting at my home, something like this, if I painted regularly, would last me a few months. Um, and I know it looks <coughs> tiny, especially uh, because we get acrylic paint in like big jugs and uh, acrylic paint goes a lot less far than oil paint so when you're putting this onto your palette here's kind of a used palette here you're only putting about um, like half of a dime's worth or half of a dime's amount um, at one time and it's because oil paint is a lot more viscous so it kind of moves around your canvas better than acrylic paint and it stays wet a lot longer so it stays workable for days and then sometimes weeks depending on what materials you mix with the oil paint um, so what I'll first do here is take a palette and um, I'll build up my palette if you have any questions about um, oh well I'm painting a portrait should I use any different colors I'm painting a landscape I can kind of uh, point you in the direction of different um, combinations and different palette arrangements because some artists really care about that some don't um, I like to start organized and then as I paint I just kind of gradually get messier and messier and that's okay um, you're going to save this paint the same way that you do this tube of paint costs anywhere between like seven and thirteen dollars um, and I needed to buy enough for two classes to use it so if you're wondering where your art fee um, goes it's to this among many things so just make sure you save your paint um, you can uh, cover a piece of or a piece of paper towel and water wrap it around your palette and then put it in a bag and there's palette storage over there so please make sure that you're kind of organizing your, your palette and saving it um, so I'm just gonna put about that much paint I'll zoom in on my palette I like to always include my primary colors French ultramarine blue or just ultramarine blue is a great primary blue it's a colder blue um, so it's kind of more on the violet side than it is on the green side cadmium yellow hue um, I will squeeze some of that out it's a great uh, primary yellow which means you can mix it to get just about anything a lot of artists practice palette limitations, so you'll see me put about six colors on here. And um, I, buy, I buy more colors. I just like to limit my palette because it will give my painting kind of a more of an overall unified feel if I'm mixing the colors myself. Um, it tends to be more visually interesting and more unified than if I had 30 billion colors that were pre-mixed by Winsor and Newton. Um, and I promise I'm not just being a cheap art teacher. Um, it's what people actually do. So we have cadmium red, cadmium yellow. Um, I buy the hues because it's not actually made with the heavy metal cadmium. And I do that as a safety precaution for you. Um, if, this, if these were made with the actual materials, um, you would have to wear gloves and really think about not getting it on your skin. Um, these are, this is Alzerian Crimson. This is a great color for portraits here. If you're interested in painting a portrait, I have all the colors that I use at home. Um, and I can, I can talk to you more about that. But for this still life, we won't go into that. Uh, Burnt Sienna is like a warm brown. I love that color. And then I'm going to put black on here. Now you're probably wondering, okay, where's where'd the white go? Um, and I buy titanium white. That's what we have um, in class too. And I'm just going to run a bead of white. I have lined up my colors. I'm going to run a really thin bead of white like that. So it looks like I squeezed out a lot, but I was pressing down kind of hard on this. So um, this is kind of skinny um, or like not that tall. And I do this because I think that I have an easier time um, keeping my white separate then if I just put like a blob of white right here the first color um, that I the first color I would mix with the white um, would get contaminated with that hue so just kind of mixing down like this allows me to not waste as much white by just contaminating it with one color I've just kind of spread it out um, kind of 
creating smarter real estate on my palette, so to speak. Um, so that's a little bit about color management, palette management. I'm going to keep all of the oil paints on this back counter over here. Um, make sure that you don't find them from any other space because I do have students working with traditional oil paints as well, depending on if I've taught them um, water-soluble oils already. Um, these oil paints that we have here mix with water. I do that for a couple of reasons. One, we can't have 45 or uh, so, 35 to 45 people in a classroom working with paint thinner, and you need paint thinner to work with traditional oil paints. Um, it smells and it's kind of toxic. So this is a little, and it's a little bit easier to work with um, the water soluble kind as well. It's easier to get off clothing. It's easier to get off your brushes. Um, we don't have to have like a somebody come and take away all the old paint thinner. We can just dump water down the drain. So it's a little bit more accessible for working in small gr or large groups. If you're interested in oil painting outside of school and you live in an apartment or even if you if you live in a house and you're kind of confined to like one room, I would recommend water soluble oils because they work almost the same way, um, but it's just a little bit healthier for you. So um, I started here with my contour line drawing. I printed out a photograph. Some people have been asking, hey, can I just use a picture that I find on my phone? The answer is you can try, um, but what I like to do when I paint um, and work on my own pieces is I will have a picture on my phone so that I can zoom in and um, the quality sometimes is a little bit better, but it really helps to have a printed out version too. So you can utilize both, but I would really recommend printing um, a picture as large as you can on a piece of paper. I also have 9 by 12 canvases, 11 by 14 canvases, uh, no, 12 by 14 canvases and 16 by 20. It's up to you which size you want to use. Um, if you've never used oil paint, I don't think I would go for the 16 by 20 just because we have about two weeks to do this. Um, so I have my set of brushes here and um, the ones that you got in the art kit, you can utilize uh, both the hog hair or like the the horse or hog hair bristled brushes more the natural ones and um, the white synthetic brushes so these this, these bristles are man-made I oftentimes start with the hog hair ones and um, just to lay colored ground and then I'll go in with these smaller um, synthetic brushes to add detail and to blend um, but that's neither here nor there right now um, all right, what I like to do in any composition is kind of look at my depth of field and say, okay, what's behind me um, and what's in front of me? And I want to kind of just block in the background first. This first like layer of things, so to speak, is just to lay approximate color and keep my proportions. Um, and then adding just briefly uh, some lights and then some darks, uh, variations of a local um, or 50% color. And if that doesn't make sense to you, I'll talk through it. Um, so. With oil painting, um, painters for years, um, from the time that oil paint was invented until now, practice a um, kind of, it's called fat over lean. Um, and what that means is you just want to paint from thin to thick. You want to first lay your paint down um, very, sorry about this, very thinly. So adding a lot of water. I'll talk about what these oils are in a little bit. Um, I want to paint in my background layer first. Oh. I have no idea what happened there. It's okay. Got some theme music going on while I'm painting. Sometimes that happens in my head. Um, I think I have, you know, but then it's not in real life. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to add a thin layer of paint. Some advantages um, to adding thin paint first is that oil paint, people stray away from it sometimes because they think, oh my gosh, I can't work with that. It uh, stays uh, wet for too long and um, it just gets goopy really easily. It does if you don't lay down almost kind of like a watercolor wash first. Um, and this method allows you to build up values while still having control over what's happening. Notice I'm not really worried about the shadows right now. Um, if you remember what my uh, kind of in-process piece looked like at the beginning, there were shadows. I'm not going to worry about them now. I'm just trying to get rid of the white um, on my canvas and fill it with color. Another uh, good thing about this uh, thin to thick or fat over lean 
uh, principle is uh, if you think about like old oil paints, oil paintings, if you've ever seen one in like a museum, um, you might think of it kind of being like crazed or crackly. The paint like kind of breaks apart. Um, painting from thin to thick will avoid that happening to your oil paintings. And you know, if one of these pieces ends up in some awesome museum um, for the next thousand years after your death, um, <coughs> you don't want it to get all crackly. You want it to stand the test of time. So painting thin to thick is the way to go with oil paint. And I'm doing this a little bit quicker than I would if I wasn't um, demoing for you guys because I don't want to. I don't want to bore you stiff. But I do want to give you the foundations of this painting technique because it is undoubtedly my favorite way to work. Um, and I always kind of wish that somebody had shown me in high school because I waited till college to really try out oil paint. If you take any art classes in college, um, you will. if you take a painting class, you'll definitely um, more likely than not be working predominantly in oil. If anybody has questions, feel free to shout them out. I'm just going to cover this ground a little bit more. See how far that, that little glob of paint, a lot of it is still there, um, and I've covered this whole space with it. So just a reminder that you don't need a crazy amount of oil paint. And that's not just the cheap art teacher in me. I'm going to just take a moment to grab a little bit more white here because I don't want to contaminate. I don't want to go too far down the strip. I want to leave that strip for other colors. Okay, so I've covered my uh, negative space, so to speak, or that background space. Um, and when you're painting um, and drawing, too, if you're trying to create a proportionally accurate drawing, you want to not just pay attention to the relationship of um, the objects in your painting. You want to pay attention to the gaps um, or that unoccupied or negative space. Um, and sometimes just switching focus to that helps your brain um, see inaccuracies or see things that you need to you need to fix a little bit. So I'll just kind of start um, now by going into a couple of objects um, and then adding value. And then I'm happy to get you on your way and help you if you have questions. I'm just going to flip this like that now. Uh, I'll start with this with this object right here. Um, so I'm going to use that Alzerian Crimson. Uh, and that color is, like I said, an important part of a palette. I will mix up the light and then the dark. My bead of white works nicely. I want to first start with my mid-tone. So I'll mix up a color that I could just lightly coat um, this entire space with just so I get color down. I know that some of this is darker. <coughs> I know that some of it's lighter. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm adding a lot of water so I can still see my pencil lines so that things don't get too crazy too fast. don't want that in any, any avenue of our life. Um, definitely not painting. <laughs> so I might want to use a little bit bigger brush for this. I, this is called uh, mixing up a local color, that mid-tone. That was a little bit too much water. You don't want to get it soupy um, because if you, if you get the paint too watery, you lose control as well. But that myth of oil painting being thick and unmanageable, um, you can lay that to rest if you just practice the thin to thick. This does stay wet on your canvas for quite some time. Um, so you can come back, uh, you know, like the next day and work on it too, which is kind of cool. It takes some getting used to. Now I'm going to find um, some of my darker values. And it's up to you if you uh, want to go for your lighter values first, depending on who you're taking painting classes from. They might tell you something else. But um, the way that I like to work is put the mid-tone in, establish some of those darker values. The key to creating a believable three-dimensional painting or drawing, um, and if you've had me before, you know that this will probably be mentioned on my tombstone, is to uh, add a full range of values. So you have darks, a variety of mid-tones, and lights. <coughs> 